Hi and welcome, I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Interview Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop and you can find it under at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. And today, I have the honor to talk to the always inspiring Akiko Sterenberger, who won multiple Cleos on Won't Stop There, and we will chat about art in general, how she comes up with these award-winning ideas, and her new book. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile, at DropMakeOfficial, to follow along with the art we are talking about, or check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now, let's get started. Welcome, Akiko. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Tom? <laughs> I'm all right. It's uh, late already. And the, the weird thing is, like, you know, the, I, I started this thing in in spring. And when I, w when I was doing interviews, um, it was kind of light still out. And now it's like getting darker and darker. And like um, you can you, you you might be able to see it, but the, the rest of you out, out there uh, will not see it. But it's already dark here. And I have like the, the, the numerous lights here to <laughs> have like a perfect glow. <laughs> <laughs> and look perfect but yeah this is every, everything except that uh, that the weather and the season is changing is everything perfect over here but how's it with you guys how's how's uh, how's uh, la doing uh we're hanging in there i mean uh just to make you a little bit jealous about three days ago it was 100 degrees fahrenheit yeah, thank over you, here thank you so <laughs> we have like 60 <laughs> Yeah, about 60. So uh, it's just starting to finally feel like fall or Los Angeles' version of fall, yeah. which I'm enjoying. I love it. Yeah, so. it is it's a good time. I, I, I remember that like like cold mornings and like uh, nice and uh, perfectly temperatured um, daytime uh, weather condition that was, it was good times. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I realize that I should not be complaining about weather at all living in California. Yeah. But, um, but 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 yeah. first question though: do you, do you live in a house? Do you, do you have like a garden or garden access that you can at least use in this Corona time? Yes, I have a backyard. Thank goodness, that's been a lifesaver, especially with a, a three-year-old yeah. stuck in the house. So. You have a, you have a kiddie pool as well, then? Um, a tiny, tiny kiddie pool, maybe about you know, uh, less than a meter wide. Yeah. Um, but it's enough just to cool him down and, and make him feel like he's somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, what, what is his favorite toy though? What, what does he distract himself with? He loves anything trucks right now. Trucks, okay. So trucks, trucks. Is, what, isn't there like, like cars, for example, the movie cars, is that, is that his thing? He loves watching you know, cars, but he, he's not yet at the age okay. where he can sit through a full movie yet. Sure. The, the shorts. He can tell you, yeah. And he can tell you every type of truck and I'm learning just by osmosis, um, osmosis, what, you know, a, a car transporter is, what a front loader is. It's, it's Interesting. crazy. Interesting. I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, many new things in this Corona time. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> We're all learning. Um, okay, so the, the podcast usually works like that. I, I always pick like three different uh, artworks of yours, and uh, you will tell me a little something about that. And I want to start okay. off with um, one of my favorites that I, um, that I have in mind was Portrait of a Lady on Fire. That artwork is so oh, special and uh, it, it looks so amazing and um, so many people mention it. And this is something else I have to say. Then um, I mean, the podcast usually covers alternative movie poster artists, but you're not one. But how did this happen and how, how did you get that through to, to, to be as an official poster? Because I know artsy posters are not that favorite. They're not favorites of the studio heads. You know, that was a miracle in itself. Um, I had worked with Neon previously, and um, I was actually brought into this project after they had a main one sheet. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. also where luck was on my side, because for a secondary poster, um, designers get room to play a little bit. And so, um, you know, after I, I saw this movie, I had, uh, of course, a million ideas because we're dealing with a the story of a painter, mm -hmm. and, but I narrowed it down to maybe four concepts that I presented to Neon. And my first idea in that presentation was this flame, mm -hmm. uh, the collusion. And um, I can't believe they went for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was so excited. Um, 
you know, like like w with any designer when they present their work, there's always this part of when you send off a presentation where you're holding your breath because you don't know what you're gonna get as a reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't get a reaction right away, but when they when 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 they finally did come back, they're like, "Why aren't we doing this idea? This is brilliant!" Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I was so excited, so excited to do it. Okay, and um, is is uh, I mean, it looks. Uh, like oil painted or some some form of actual analog. Um, did did you do it analog or did you? Did, yes. Okay. Well, I started off. I started. It started off analog. I, I did paint it with acrylic paint because that's okay. usually the medium that I'm 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 the most comfortable using, mm -hmm. and I just could not make it feel dimensional mm -hmm. enough. So even though I painted it and I scanned it in, um, I felt like it needed something more. It felt too flat. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I actually did was uh, find stock photography of, of oil paint dabs, mm -hmm. and um, I composed it digitally on top uh, of my okay. painting so that it really, really got that yeah. look. Because even, even the things I was scanning in, no matter how thick I painted it or how I tried to photograph it, it just mm -hmm. wasn't giving the look that I wanted. And so um, luckily the stock, the stock photography really helped me Bring that yeah, to life. it looks it looks very uh, 3D or three uh, three dimensional in that case, and uh, I think that's it, it's a brilliant minimalistic take on this this uh, this movie. And uh, one more question though on on this one, it it has this Polaroid style feeling. Is that is that something you wanted to do, or is it just something because of the framing you just it just came out in the end that way? Um, I think, I mean, I love framing posters that way because mm -hmm. it always reminds me of old posters that I love and I collect. And, you know, part of, I, I kind of fall back on that framing quite mm -hmm. a bit, but also mm -hmm. it, it was used to help also bring attention to the title treatment mm -hmm. because sticking a title treatment on the painting, it, it, I, I wanted the title treatment to feel separate from the art so that the art really just felt like a piece of art instead of like a poster, you know? Yeah. And so... Uh, and was it necessary that you had to do the um, the credit block? Because like, I know, um, for example, for the Empire Strikes Back one by Matt Ferguson that just came out for the 40th anniversary, uh, he had to do the, the credit block on the official poster, but he was not allowed to do the credit block on the printed version. And that's... Wow. Um, yeah, if, if I remember correctly, we originally I originally had the credit block mm -hmm. on it, but then Neon decided that we didn't need it, and so we just kept it very simple with just the logos of the company okay. and just the name. So yeah, yeah, I think it suits it even better with the with the whole minimalistic style, and then the credit block would have, would have destroyed that feeling. I have to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah I I was so lucky that they went with it. Um, you know, at that point, it was the second time that I had worked with mm -hmm. Neon. And the first time I had worked with them, we had done somewhat of a minimalist poster as well. So um, so I was really excited that they, and, and, it, and it was an optical illusion too. So I was excited that they were, you know, mm -hmm. willing to do that again. Yeah. That's great. Um, the second one I wanted to talk about is, I really love that film, 13 Assassins. Okay. That's. I mean, it's it's something I wouldn't have seen coming in that regard. That because like like some some movies are in there that I wouldn't say, wow, you did that. That's interesting. Why is like how? First of all, the choice or is it was it just a job? Because I can't imagine. Because I think you everything you probably start uh, because you were working very artistic. That it is um, has a has a meaning to you in that regard. Is, is that so or? Um, yes. I mean, obviously I, I have a little bit of a history with Takashi Miike, okay. you know, because like, uh, when I was in, uh, when I was in a uh, design school, I would watch some of his films. So when this project came to me, I was actually, um, hired by a movie poster ad agency oh, okay. to bring me on to this project. So I was excited to switch it up a little bit from what I'm used to doing because at that time I was mainly working on very art house films or even horror films. So to be 
be brought in for this movie, I was like, I don't know if I'm really the right fit for this movie, but I'll try, you know? And um, I think just just looking at the unit photography and, mm -hmm. and um, I came up with this crop of just having all this action, but without seeing all of their faces, yeah. you know? And, and um, I didn't think they would go for it, and they did. <laughs> um, you know, the original version I had was a black and white version, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. I think for the actual one sheet, they made it color, and they changed the logo. Oh, they did? But, okay, um, because, yeah, yeah, I have the black and white version as well, but I don't remember for the, the, the I don't remember a colored version. And there's also a second one. That's also by you, or is it just a comparison for the movie? That's okay. also by me. That was one that was presented to, to okay. Magnolia, and it didn't make it to the final stages, but the black and white did. Okay, I see. But, yeah, I, I uh, how, how did you like the movie then? Um, You know, uh, I grew up with, like, samurai movies you know How's that? Uh, my brother loves. okay um for me it you know it's i think with a lot of his films are they're, they're like over the top violent for mm -hmm. me but i can appreciate them for what they are okay. and i always okay. think they're done in a very artistic way so um so yeah i, I was excited to work okay, on it. quick side question what's your favorite samurai movie Oh boy. <laughs> tough question, huh? <laughs> that is a tough question. I mean, I really have yeah, to. Yeah, you're not allowed to say Seven Samurai. That's too easy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll have to think think back because I, I mean, or do I you, was do just you so know what little. your brother's uh, favorite movie is? I think that's what I have to kind of dig deep into my brain because mm -hmm. I would just watch whatever okay. he would watch. <laughs> but we'll have to come back to All that right, one. okay. <laughs> if it comes to your I mind. Mean, it might be Deep dig, yeah, if it, you if know? it pops into your head, just just shout it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the last one for this round would be obviously everybody's talking about it. Your funny games poster. What's yeah. the story behind it? I mean, you you explained it a little bit in Eileen's talk, but uh, let's hear a quick version for it, so we're not gonna bore the people. <laughs> Okay, um, so this was very early on in my movie poster career. Um, I had just quit a full-time job at a movie poster agency, and they hired me to be a freelancer on this project. Yeah. And at that time, my thing, again, was more art house and horror films. So when this project came in, I, I was pretty excited about that, and I actually made a few different designs for this, for this film. But there came a point when the director... Michael Haneke uh, wanted to really focus on this specific film, this specific uh, shot in the film. Mm -hmm. And uh, they somehow assigned it to me because what we had was just the tiniest little screenshot. Mm -hmm. I mean, teeny tiny. 150 and, by um, 150. <laughs> If that, so like you know, when you zoom in, it just turned into a mess. Yeah, I, I was just about and to ask that way because it was uh, the movie came out in '97, so you you probably did the poster in '97 or '96. I don't I don't know when it was released in '97, but um, uh, technology wise, how? <laughs> Maybe oh, that's well, an interesting see, insight the... for the people out there that just know all the cool digital stuff now. <laughs> Oh, well, I think you're speaking about the German version because I, I was working on the English-speaking one, which was in 2004. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because he remade his own film. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. That's the, the, ori the yeah. original version. I was like, I'm not that old. <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, so um, he he expressed interest in this, this, this uh, scene but it was unusable. Mm -hmm. And of course, the agency was presenting a bunch of other ideas too. And so I decided to, I'm gonna try to make it work. And this was the first time that I worked in illustration doing it digitally. Up until that point, I wanted to only do things analog, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna challenge myself because this has to work. So um, what I did is just looked up multiple um, reference images of Naomi Watts and just tried to collectively build her face in my head and then illustrate this poster mm -hmm. so that it could kind of pass mm -hmm. <laughs> enough to present to, to, to the client. 
And um, it was originally just supposed, just supposed to be a placeholder until we got the high res film grab to eventually become the poster. But of course, the director fell in love with my illustration mm -hmm. instead. And um, there were moments when Warner Independent, which was the studio putting yeah. it out, wanted to add more to it. And luckily, you know, the director was on my side to keep it simple. And I would have never guessed that, you know, so many years later, people are still loving the poster and still bringing it up. And so it really is a, it really makes me so proud to that and proof that less is always going to be more and it'll stand the test of time. Did, did you also watch the German version, Dan? I did. I did. And because what's your, um, what's your verdict? Actually, Which one is better? <laughs> um, I mean, they're different. Even though they're sh they're the same shot scene for scene, it, it, it's different, you know. Um, but um, yeah, I I still feel they're different. But uh, Criterion Collection actually came to me a few years ago, mm -hmm. and they said we're re-releasing the German version. Okay. Would you be interested in doing the German actress exactly how you did Naomi? Uh, and at first I was like, oh, I don't want to repeat myself. You know, I, I, I feel strangely about that because that poster gave me my career. But then I think back and I was like, well, the director is repeating himself. So in a way, it does make sense to do it. So I was able to, to paint the German actress nice. in the same way. Do you know that? The exact do you know? Still know? Or? know the name of the, the I'll, German I'll find actress. it out. I'll find it out while you're talking, okay? okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Susanna and, Lothar. I found it. And, uh, you know, we. I was so excited to do it, and then at the last minute, the Criterion Collection decided to kill it after all because, um, you know, the director's like, yeah, I don't want to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> so so it almost went, went, went through, which would have been... Yeah. Fun. but the process was fun okay that's cool that's cool i mean that's a it's a good thing to do that in that version and i think that would have been a great idea to uh, like make yeah. this project happen and i just i just saw uh susan lota died in 2012 to oh wow okay. but yeah okay uh so she would have not seen her cool poster version of her <laughs> i mean a cover version of her <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. On a on a more interesting note, um, what poster are you most proud of? Oh boy, uh, which that's an interesting question. Which baby do you love the most? <laughs> <sighs> yep, right. <laughs> choose one kid. <laughs> choose one exactly, kid as your favorite. Exactly. Um, that you know, it changes. It changes because you know there there are things visually that that make. Poster's my favorite, but but more and more recently, it's become the process behind okay. them. You know? Um, we, we, we were going mean, to focus on that a little bit later. I, I, that's uh, that's going to be okay. one of the big questions. I think, you know, more recently, Portrait of the of a Lady on Fire would, would be one of my favorites just because Neon let me do what I wanted to do. There were no changes. Yeah. You know, we, we had slight revisions with with the title treatment and maybe the layout but for the most part i think any process where the client comes to me and they really understand my point of view and 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 let me do my thing it, that those tend to be my favorite projects mm, okay. um, another more recent one was i'm thinking of ending mm -hmm. things it was uh, the Charlie Kaufman yeah. film for Netflix. Yeah. How did you like that one? Um, I think that was, it was crazy. It was just too crazy. That was a trip. Yeah. Uh, I watched it twice because I, I, I really wanted to understand it. And I even watched the last maybe 45 minutes mm -hmm. of the film, like third time, because I really wanted to understand it. I mean, for me, working on a poster, I really can't get past trying to wrap it up conceptually mm -hmm. and so this one was was difficult because i didn't know what was yep, going on i understand on. totally understand yeah um and because it's kaufman i wanted to and so i actually got a clue from my, from netflix what what the whole thing is about but um at the same time uh, a movie so bizarre really does open up the doors to to, to making something so out there for a poster yeah. and 
it was a situation too where again my poster is a secondary one so the main one sheet is a photographic one so that gives me more room to to mm -hmm. play around so um so I think maybe my first or second idea that I presented to Netflix was was this idea of her being covered in snow mm -hmm. and um, just ran with yeah. it. So it was really fun. Yeah, it, it looks it looks great. I love the colors as well. Like the the brown and yellow goes perfect with the green, and then the the white of the snow that puts it in there. I think it's yeah, it's a very cool poster. I really liked it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one more question. You most of the time work in the usual portrait style of posters. But as we can see in the background right now, you have this um, under the skin poster. And this under the skin poster is not a portrait one. What's, uh, is that on purpose? Was that, uh, was it a client that asked for it or? This was working directly with Jonathan Glazer in A24. Mm -hmm. um, when he, when they approached me, they originally said, we don't want a poster of Scarlet in the galaxy. We don't want, we don't want to show stars and the, not cliche, but what you would expect from a sci-fi yeah. uh, alien movie. And so um, I had many conversations with Jonathan Glazer about um, what he envisioned. And he, he envisioned something with Scarlet kind of disintegrating, uh, almost like an oil slick you might mm -hmm. see on the road and, and it turning into these tripped out colors. So together we came up with this idea and um, eventually it got killed by A24 and the poster became Scarlett Johansson in the galaxy. <laughs> But it's well done. It's uh, it's done by Neil Callerhouse, and I've worked with him, and I love him, and he's got um, he's I have so much respect for him. So he did it well. Mm -hmm. But it it goes to show you that in certain instances, and in most instances, um, a director's uh, voice still kind of can be overridden mm -hmm. by a studio's marketing voice. Uh -huh. But. Um, People love that poster, even though you know it didn't become an official yeah, one. But but why is it in landscape this one? Because I, I couldn't find another landscape one except this one. Oh, because it was it was going to be a UK quad. Ah, originally okay. That they, makes sense. They told me to work in a UK quad, and I I thought, okay, this is great to work in this horizontal format for mm -hmm. once, and so I really took advantage so, of it. So, um, would you ever consider doing it again? Uh, uh, like a yeah. UK quad? Yes, I would love to. I, I mean, I think I'm always confused why uh, a movie poster is vertical because we see films yeah, <laughs> I mean, in, in a landscape format. And I see I see you have some behind you. But um, I think, you know, especially with certain films, it feels more epic and more um, incredible to take advantage of this this horizontal landscape. Yeah. So, All right, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I see. Um before I want to touch on uh, how you became an artist and uh, became this uh, Clio award-winning uh, super illustrator, designer, whatever it is, <laughs> um, I wanted to know, because you touched on it, that uh, um, directors can be overridden uh, in terms of by the, by the studio and the marketing department or whatever. How do you see yourself in... Um, in, in this world, because you are in this position that you'll get hired as a basically as a freelancer, you get commissioned for the work. Um, so um, who is basically deciding what is happening? Can you talk us a little bit through this process of a pro in this case? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, luckily more and more movie studios are approaching me because of my mm -hmm. work and fully understanding my work more and more. And I feel like that gives me more of a voice. But um, usually when I start on any project, the first phase of it is coming up with ideas. And there are times when a studio has, okay, like we want to go down this direction, but we wanna see what you would bring us in this direction. And um, most of the time, I sort of like that challenge of like, okay, we're not completely locked mm -hmm. in, but there is a slight mm -hmm. guideline. And I want to see how far I can push that 
boundary within that gu guideline. So I actually welcome it. Um, but there are also times when I get directions where, which I think like, oh, I don't know if I like this direction at mm. all. I'll, I'll do mm. one along that direction, but I'm also going to present what I feel mm. is right. And so there are times when I've been able to talk them out of that direction and I'm like, all right, you know, I feel really good about that. Um, but I, I have been really lucky in the last few years to, to feel like I could speak up mm -hmm. more. Um, mm -hmm. There are still moments where my hands are tied like any designer, but for the most part, I, I try to push better work and better ideas as much as mm -hmm. I can. And um, I think that studios are becoming more open to them. I think they're paying attention more to the whole alternative movie poster scene. Um, I think they want people to collect posters again and that was missing for a good amount of time so um i think they're 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 more hip to to what's going on on the sidelines and so i think they they want to open up to that mm -hmm. and i think you know more recently with them not just doing one one sheet and doing secondary posters that also opens the door for more creative work mm -hmm. as well so um i mean you you said that portrait of a lady on fire is um one of your favorite posters right now um would you would you pick that as well as a print version that the, the if for example one of the bigger galleries would say hey akiko let's do a print run of 150 screen printed I'd be open to that. I, I think that Neon originally said they wanted to do something with it. So um, we'll see. Yeah, I think they have happens. a good contact with Mondo. Uh, and they do. yeah, they so do. maybe at some point. <laughs> maybe at some point. I know people are asking me all the okay, time. I will, and so I, I, I will, said, contact Neon, contact Mondo. I, I, will, I will have, uh, I will have a talk with, with the gang from Mondo. So I will, I will let them know. Akiko, okay. Akiko wants, the, uh, wants our posters. <laughs> 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 okay um so uh, as i just mentioned i wanted to wanted to know where did you start out are you uh, have you been drawing or artsy in that way since you were a kid or where does it come from i have been drawing ever since i was a little kid uh my dad actually uh was a is a um, automobile designer and illustrator so I grew up watching him hunched over his drafting table and he worked from home. So I guess also early on in life, I realized, oh, there can be working artists that are independent. And so that, that definitely planted a seed for, for how things could go for my future. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, my mom too, she was very, my mother was very creative, even though she never took it to a professional level. She was always interested in all types of things. So, you know, I would come home one day and my mom would, you know, she was taking a theater makeup class and I'd come home from school and she'd have a beard, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it was just, the, I, I feel very lucky that I was in a household uh, full of parents that encouraged a creative a creative child, you know, and, and my, my siblings were, are creative too. So, um, are they, uh, what going, field are they creative? Um, well, my sister, she was an illustrator. Um, my big brother for, uh, for a few years followed in the footsteps of my dad and, and was doing automotive design as well, but he changed. And my little brother, he's more of a businessman, but he's also an entrepreneur. So he comes up with these very interesting ideas that people in his field, you know, they're, they don't, uh, they, they stay within their confines of business. And my brother kind of pushes the boundaries uh, of that as well. So, I mean, we're all very creative. I mean, we're, we're one crazy wacky family. So I think that helps too. But, um, but yeah, I, I always grew up drawing. And I think when I was in high school, I didn't know what I was going to do for college. Um, and uh, I was going to actually join the army because I had, no, yeah, I, had, I had no... Yeah, I know. Uh, can you imagine? I couldn't. I, I would be... I know. I hate exercise, too, so I'd be... Terrible at it. <laughs> well, don't don't but, um, don't say that too yeah. loud because people are gonna get jealous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I just didn't know where I was gonna go, and uh, my mother suggested that I tried moving down to Los Angeles and and trying to go to art school. Mm -hmm. 
And at first when I applied, they laughed in my face because, you know, I was drawing cartoons. They wanted to see figure drawings. So what school, I immediately, what school Which school? Art, Art Center College okay. of Design. They used to have a European cam oh, campus in Switzerland. Okay. Um, okay. So um, uh, they laughed in my face and they told me, come back in a few <laughs> years. But of course, when someone tells me I can't do something, I want to do it even more. So um, I took a bunch of night classes and figure drawing classes and I applied the following term and got accepted. Mm -hmm. So um, I got accepted into their illustration program and um, I was just about to graduate and the last term of school, I took an advertising class. I don't know why I had no interest in advertising, yeah. but um, it happened and my teacher actually told me if I had taken advertising earlier on, maybe I would have switched to advertising. So I never thought anything of it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, after I graduated college, I went to New York and I was doing illustrations for music and entertainment magazines. And um, I was doing them and, and, you know, freelancing, dropping my book off everywhere. And then September 11th happened and everything kind of went upside down. But I continued to freelance as much as I could while working three other jobs. Did you, did and you go back, um, uh, I by then or? I went back to Los Angeles in 2004. Okay. Uh, I, I gave New York a good yeah. amount of years. And um, when I moved back, I just needed any job. And a friend of mine was working at a movie poster advertising agency. So that action to that. But uh, okay. um, yeah. And then, and then how, how did it pan out? What was the first project you were put on? Or what is the first project that you remember? Well, I hadn't, I didn't have any interest in movie posters at that time, you know, okay. and I was still freelancing as an, as an editorial illustrator, but, um, the, the job that was actually open at that agency was for a receptionist. So <laughs> okay. I, interviewed, yeah. So I interviewed for the receptionist job, but I wow. happened to have, <laughs> yeah, I, I happened to have an illustration in a magazine. So I, so I threw, like I showed it to the owner during my interview mm -hmm. and he was the one that actually said, why don't you try making movie posters? Okay. And, and so they tried me out. I don't know what they were thinking because I barely <laughs> knew how to use a computer and I was always doing everything wrong. Um, but slowly, uh, I learned the ropes. Nobody walked me through it. I was basically thrown into the fire. No YouTube tutorials. <laughs> No YouTube tutorials, um, but eventually, um, you know, it went from like, oh, that's cute that you made that. We're never going to show that to the client to, okay, we're going to, we're going to try, you know? And then eventually, uh, they kept putting more and more of my, my, my designs in the presentations to the point where I actually, they hired me as a designer and well, the rest is but history. Do you remember the first like project you tried on or is, or is like which movie it was? Oh, boy, I think it was called Racing Stripes. Racing Stripes. Never heard of that one. <laughs> it was about a zebra who who uh, wanted to be a race driver. Is that is that what? Wanted it is? to be a, a, a race horse. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting concept. So yeah. um, you know, and of course, at that time, everything, nothing was illustrated. In, in the movie industry, yeah. you know, maybe one poster was illustrated in three years. So I was doing, I was working with photography mm -hmm. and I was composing things in, in Photoshop and, you know, so it was very like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it, it was very interesting. But it's, <laughs> I'm but surprised yeah. it fired me a million times. How, how do you see, for example, when you look at Drew Struzan, for example, who has been around for such a long time, did iconic posters before, all basically hand-drawn because that's what he does. And... Uh, not made on a computer in that way. And it turned to this kind of very artificial and clumsy style. And now we're going back. What, 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 how do you see that in, in that way? Because like, that's where you come from, like the old school side, I would say. And mm -hmm. it turns into this. Yeah, I mean, I think when I started in the industry, it was all Photoshop. So I think... At that point, I only saw it as a job. I was still doing freelance editorial mm -hmm. illustration, but I didn't see any longevity in it for me because for me, I wanted something more art-based, you know? And so I, I knew that I was going to work in this field to kind of pay off student loans mm -hmm. and, and 
you know, get to the point where I repaid things from living in New York post 9-11. But I just never really thought that I would have a long future with it. But um, I think what made things incredibly, uh, what changed the path, like the path incredibly is that I worked with very, very creative and talented creative directors. And we would get these art house films in the agency and they would bring me on and they would help cultivate and help really, you know, they made me feel comfortable bringing more art into that. And I think once funny games came out or once, uh, you know, more and more of my art house pieces became official posters, yeah. I started appreciating it a little bit more. But, but yeah, going back to what you said, it, it was all Photoshop at that point. And um, illustration was, you know, I think barely happening. And, and so it's, it's been interesting with all the, all the uh, alternative movie posters like Mondo, especially to see that that's slowly creeping in over the last decade and becoming more and more. So I'm so happy that it's going back to illustration, whether it's digital or analog, I'm just happy that illustration has a voice what, in, in our industry. What was the, um, like, do, do you know what the opinion of those art directors who did movie poster at that time and they were pushing it for the Photoshop or was it more like, hey, the studio bosses say that's that's the way we have to do it or how how was that? Do you, do you remember or is it? I think in that time it was more about showing the actor's face as big as possible. The floating, so the floating it, heads basically, yeah. The floating heads, exactly. So it was definitely studio driven. But um, it doesn't mean that all the designers around me weren't pushing better art. You know, that's the thing is for from any outsider looking at what is put out as movie posters, you might think, oh, these designers are terrible. I would make it a million times better. But that's not the case. All these designers were making incredible pieces. It just was up to the studios whether or not they would see the light of day. Would you, um, or did you had contact in that, in that, or did you, were you part of the conversation when basically let's say, Hey, this is, this is the super cool illustrated art. And I think we should do this because this is way better <laughs> brackets. And then studio says, no, no, no. I want my floating heads. I don't care what you do. Is that like, I, I wonder, I wonder yeah. what this conversation looks like. Why, why would they say, Hey, this is. This is better. Why, why would they come up with this is better? That's, that's my question, you know? I think they're more interested, you know, especially for the big budget films. Mm -hmm. They put so much money into mm -hmm. the advertising. And so they want to guarantee that these theaters are going to fill. So for someone in the Midwest who's maybe not a, mm -hmm. you know, an artistic person, they see a giant Tom Cruise head, they know exactly what they're going to get and they're going to pay the money. So... It, it was definitely more studio driven to to know to to almost follow this formula of knowing that this works and this brings in the money, so let's just do what works. And so um, very early on, you know, uh, at the agency I was working at, there were almost two teams. There was one team for the more mainstream, and there was one that was the more art house. And I think. You know, they slowly pulled me more to the art house once I figured out how to do everything. And uh, it was those projects that I was really excited about. You know, of course, I wish I could tell, you know, my family and friends at that point that I worked on this huge film. But I felt like I was more proud of the actual piece of art that came out of it than the notoriety. Um, and I still am. Yeah, like like th like uh, coming back to the the things you said that having the the, the people more notice. I mean, when you look, especially look at your breakthrough piece, uh, the funny games one, yeah, having now and I only um what's I remember what's is it right? Um, that, yeah, that yeah. like that big on a poster, and or uh, your b a biggest splash one where you have Tilda Swinton on, or the her one where you have Joaquin Phoenix on, in the middle of it. I mean. Um, did they all have basically, but they're, they're not floating heads, but they are good illustrated designed pieces. And I, I wonder mm -hmm. why, why they didn't like, you know, want to go that route in that way. Why, why does it have to be so obvious and so cheap looking? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think to quote one of my studio clients directly when I was working on this one project and we were doing illustrations of the two actors 
it got so close to being the actual poster, but then at the last minute, they opened up the poster to a focus group. You know, they just pull in random people mm. and be like, what do you take away from this poster? And because it was an illustration, they thought that it was an animated series. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's those things that you're just like, oh, okay. okay good thing we have 2020. <laughs> Did you, uh, I just heard about this uh, new movie coming out on Netflix. It is like the first movie that uses like hybrid animation CGI kind of technology to do like this a war movie about World War II. I forgot the name, but it, it looked kind of interesting, I have to say. And the trailer, and it's some some oh. kind of new technology oh. that you're doing. Do you know the name uh, of hold it? Hold up, I'll put because I'm I'm gonna uh, tape on uh, on Sunday. I will tape my 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 news podcast in German, and it's called yeah. The movie's called The Liberator. Oh, okay. And it's yeah, on September 9th, uh, for, uh, 43, over 3,000 naval vessels, 150 troops began Operation Avalanche, the Allied invasion of Italy, German resistance, blah 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 blah. And uh, the four-part series will be the first ever produced in trioscope. Enhanced hybrid mm. animation and new patent-pending technology combining a state-of-the-art art, state of the art CGI with live-action performance. And so on and so on. Wow. Well, that sounds incredible. Sounds very interesting, I have to say. So, yeah. And, of course, I love, I love technology and when things get, get fancy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um this is this is just like this is basically when the people say this animated series i could because the poster for it is basically like some sort of animation it's like weird that like you know it actually exists what people think of your poster back then you know yeah so, but yeah um what was do you have a favorite floating head poster do I have a favorite floating? Oh, you know, I mean, one that I'm not mad at is definitely uh, No Country for Old Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember which one. Mm -hmm. Because it, it looks like a classic old poster. So, I mean, I feel like it was done tastefully. Okay, yeah, I, I'll give it that. And one of the worst ones, I the lately, I always come, like, when I have, like, when I remember, this was one of the worst posters I've, I can remember is, um, it was it this year? Spider-Man Far From Home, was it this year? Hmm. Or was it last year? I don't remember. But I feel like it might have been last year. It was the Spider-Man one with Mysterio in it, and you know where they based for it was an IMAX poster. They had just the border of uh, the of the um, like some green border, and then every corner had a character in it and a title in the middle, and it looked oh, it looked awful. It looked like a like an intern did it in five minutes. And, yeah. Oh yeah, that looks good. Let's take this. Yeah, the more is more is more posters, you know, but. It is what it is, sadly. It is what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, I think about one poster, I think about one designer at like a movie poster agency and go like, oh my gosh, kill me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I totally understand. If you have to do yeah. some stuff you don't want to do, it is like killing yeah. the soul, you know? Yeah, yeah. But oh well. Um. I do movie reviews, as I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, and I was wondering what was the last movie you saw? The last movie I saw... Uh, this boy. horror flick called The Final Debate for the... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know, that was that was pretty scary last night. Um, but it, wasn't, it wasn't as bad as the, as the, uh, it wasn't as the first bad. one. Yeah, the moderator definitely kept them in and check. The mic, the mic muting helped. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely helped. Um, uh, the last movie I saw in its entirety was Uncut Gems. And thoughts? Um, I really wanted to see it in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to watch it at home. Um, I can imagine the... I mean, it, I was getting anxiety just watching yeah. it at home. So I can only imagine how much more anxious I would have been in the theater, but you know, with the soundtrack and the music, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I mean, it's great when a, when a, a film can really make you feel such extreme yeah. emotions. We but, uh, but yeah, that was the last film that I had seen. And, um, 
I actually really like Adam Sandler in his more serious roles. Yeah, I, I love it too. I, and, I saw Hobby Halloween, uh, Hobby Halloween that just came out like last week or whenever it was, and uh, yeah, was, that was old Sandler <laughs> again. Okay. Or like, or yeah. not, not this old Sandler, but it was like this, this Sandler where he does weird stuff. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate old Sandler for when that time yeah. happened, you know, but I feel like he's, he's evolved so much since. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that love him in his more dramatic roles. But yeah, I like the I love the movie a lot. And it's so sad that it got snapped like from the Oscars and everything, because like he definitely deserved something for this one. Oh yeah. He was great in it. He was, he was excellent. Yeah. Um, the posters are also really great. And I, I know for a fact that A24 put out some, like I think it was an infographic or like some kind of infographic type poster as well for it and some other stuff as merchandise you can buy because they have very creative ways in doing stuff. Did, did, did you see the poster? Uh, I saw the main one, she, yeah. just the how, black and white exactly. one. With his, with how did you like How bleeding. did you like it? I, I am a sucker for less is more. And so I thought it did what it needed to do. It, it wasn't trying too hard, it, you know, and I, it's just simple and clean. You know, I can never be upset at something simple. Mm. Little side note question. Um, do you do tribute posters, for example? Because I like, you know a couple of friends of mine, they, they do tribute posters for movies they really like, but they never had the chance to work on, but they really loved it. So they just do something for it. Is that, is that something you do as well or like, like at least sketch something or... Um, I don't. I mean, um, I've been really lucky that my work keeps me busy mm -hmm. and any, any chance that I have outside of work, I'm going to be making entirely different work. Okay. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't gone down the tribute fan art route yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I see. Because, um, I was, cause I was wondering if you ever would wanted to do, uh, uncut gems poster, if you liked the movie. Um, yes, but at the same time, I, I have so many ideas kind of stored in my brain that I want to use them for real projects eventually, sure. which right. I do. And so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and after doing, after doing movie posters for 16 years, um, I, I like kind of being able to kind of dig back into those old concepts I had that never got used mm. and, and try them for other things. Okay. So. Fair enough. So who knows? <laughs> That might change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I commission you for an uh, uncut um, screen print, I, I, could, I could get you, yeah? <laughs> Possibly. <Okay. laughs> but yeah, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, as, as simple and clean and, and, and reverent as, as that poster was, I mean, you could really go nuts for that. You could really yeah. go nuts for that film. So, I mean, I'm sure some incredible art could, could be made as a tribute. Okay, perfect. Um, and what is a must-see movie or TV show or whatever that is coming out or that you know you really want to see? Oh, well, I mean, I'm really excited about Borat. So okay. That's what I'm watching tonight. I've been, once when they announced it, I was so excited. So I've been counting down the days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since it, my birthday, <laughs> I was like, perfect timing. <laughs> and Giuliani, the Giuliani scene is crazy. I only saw like a screenshot of it, yep. so it's yeah, I can't really you, imagine. Because so uh, it has been like two days ago, three days ago, whenever they, when like the controversy hit, like when he was like to, yeah. like putting stuff on Twitter, it's uh, crazy, 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 crazy. I tell you. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you have a favorite movie, or did you find? Do I? Have or, a yeah. Did you find? Or did you find your favorite samurai movie? Did Did I? Did what? you find your favorite samurai movie? Oh, you know what? I, I'm trying to think of what my favorite samurai <laughs> movie was. I mean, I think, I think the one that I remember the most when I was little was Shogun. Okay, you know, that's a good choice. Um, but I'm sure there's more. I just, I'm my my memory's mm -hmm. failing me right now. Um, but, uh, but but yeah, as far as my favorite favorite movie, gosh, you know, when I was younger, it was so much easier to 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 to. Uh, to determine that because yeah. I, I think when I first yeah. started in the movie poster agents, uh, movie poster industry, my favorite movie was Rushmore, Okay. you know, and then I also loved welcome to the dollhouse. So, you know, um, from Wes Anderson to Todd salons and, and, um, I feel like those two were, were ones that, that I really, mm. 
took with me for a long time. Um, I have to rewatch them to see if they still hold mm -hmm. up. <laughs> but as far as like a current yeah, what favorite what pops movie? in your head like right away? Because like for example, for example, for me, it's always um, because it's like super hard because I watch probably like two hundred movies a year, plus TV mm -hmm. shows. So it's like, yeah. well, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but also a lot of shitty stuff. But um, in the end, basically, yeah. I always say if somebody asks me for my favorite movie, I always say Empire Strikes Back because I'm a big Star Wars fan. And okay. That's like, yeah, that's my favorite Star Wars movie. So I always, I always go for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gosh, I don't know. I'll have to come back to that one. It's okay, sure. I mean, if but, I think about yeah. yeah. Oh, is, is there something that pops in your head right away? Or nothing? Is it just blank? It's. I mean, it's the same like you. There's so much that I see, so much that I see for work, mm -hmm. and so much, so many shows okay. as well. So sure. I mean, there, it, it's 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 not a kind of direct answer, but I'll mm -hmm. keep thinking. But did you for um, Rushmore and what was the other one? The, the, the Dollhouse. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Dollhouse. dollhouse. Yeah. Uh, did you do a poster for those two? This was before I was in this. In the movie poster world. Yeah. So, but um, would you want to do a poster for that? <laughs> would I want to? I mean, since they <sighs> kind of definitely in that time meant a lot to you. Yes and no, because I mean they're both kind of perfect for that time when they came out. You know, mm -hmm. um, I was really happy because I was able to work on a Todd Salons film pretty early on in my career. Mm -hmm. So that was like a big dream come true for me. But but yeah, I mean, it's hard because you attach memories to those posters too. Yeah. So I, I kind of don't want to yeah. break something that's not broke. I mean, don't want to fix something that's not broken. Okay. You know? for, for me, it was a little different uh, when, because like, Because I, I wasn't like, because I did, uh, don't make my own posters. I mean, I did one for fun, for friends of mine, <laughs> for yeah. a documentary. It's, it was vector art, though. It wasn't like illustration, so. I want to see. I'll, I'll, I'll show, I'll show you show. later. People already saw it. Okay. I'll show you later. <laughs> but, okay. um, but um, yeah, so, so, so my idea of like, that, that's how, how I got started with the alternative movie poster scene is that um, I have moments of that movie, that, not that the, poster creates those moments because the moments from the movie create basically the poster for me so i i have this connection for a certain motif from from the film as for example with the lord of the rings one here i i really love this one i love the dutch angle metaphors news the colors and everything and i'm i'm mm -hmm. a big when it comes to lord of the rings i read the books and everything and watch the movies multiple times and I'm yeah. a big, uh, always like uh, my favorite Lord of the Rings movie is Fellowship of the Ring because I love this mm -hmm. kind of origin story and how the group gets together. Mm -hmm. And this is this is perfectly the resemblance of 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 this in, in this poster for me. What what is my my favorite part of it? And I think that's mm -hmm. what the alternative movie poster scene brings to it in that regard. And that's why I like those kind of posters. And that's why I could have could have imagined that like just doing the key art most of the time have if you have those moments yourself that this it could be something you wanted to do because mm -hmm. sometimes they spoil stuff but oh yeah no they definitely spoil things but um but yeah i mean maybe one day <laughs> maybe i'll do maybe i'll do rushmore poster Who knows? all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um so you do you have favorite posters right now not not your own But do you have something you really like right now? You've seen maybe on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, and you say, oh, this is some really cool stuff. Even if it's key art or even it's alternative, is this something you really, that knocked you um, out of the park? Yes. Uh, I'm late to just discover Alexander Valieski. Alexander Valieski, a Polish artist. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, and I just uh, saw that he had some prints for sale. So I went crazy and I bought five of crazy. them. I don't hang movie posters in my office. I'm, um, I think I already feel like movie, po movie posters consume way too much of my life. So I don't actually <laughs> hang them <laughs> anywhere. Um, but with his, I did. I mean, I think when I first started in the industry, I was obsessed with uh, Polish posters. Mm -hmm. You know, and I still always, when I'm starting a new project, I always look at Polish posters because I've, I've always appreciated how simple and naive and grungy they are, you know? And, and so, um, 
So when I found out about Alexander's work, I was like, all right, just bought five posters. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put them, but I have them now. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some great ones. I, I just showed him like, the, is, is that the ones you got? Uh, the the Ap Apocalypse Now, Joker, uh, Once Upon a Time in yeah. Hollywood, and w w which one yeah. am I missing? Uh, Apocalypse Now. The, uh, the yeah. John Luc Godin film. Oh, yes, in Breathless. Yeah. Breathless. Yeah. You also did a poster for that one, so. I also did a poster for Breathless. Mm -hmm. This was through Absolute and from uh, Metrograph, New York mm -hmm. City, is, is, you know, an iconic theater. And so they um, asked, I think it was eight different artists to reimagine the posters. Mm -hmm. And so. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just did this breathless one maybe about a year ago. So when I saw Alexander's breathless one, I was like, oh, that's so clever. Mm -hmm. Man, that's so great. <laughs> I was like, I was like, dang, I wish I would have done that one. <laughs> yeah. Um speaking of the Polish artists, I mean there's there's been like a great um there, there's a there's a scene actually for just Polish or Eastern European movie posters. And the Polish ones are really crazy. They are out there. They look totally different. They, the, for example, I, I just have in mind this. Um, there's a Star Wars one from A New Hope, and from the '80s, I think it was a '80s, like it was made in the '80s, the Polish poster or the Polish version, and um, the, it has like three C-3PO on there. Just an, I think it was an outline or something like that, and it has like stars in the background, if I remember correctly. But it's such a crazy poster, and like it, it goes it goes online for six hundred seven hundred dollars or something like that. So it's like very oh, expensive wow. to get one. Wow. And but yeah, are you like did you look that up or did uh, do you know about those things or? No, I'll have to look okay, it up. Okay, look it up. You yeah, this, this, they, they they look nothing, nothing like it I, I don't know who who allowed that basically I, I don't know how this happened because this looks this looks totally crazy I, I tell you if you it, and the studio actually put them out I, or, I don't know uh, how it worked back then but it was okay. probably different times back then but uh, yeah, some some yeah, Polish yeah. artist or the, the Polish version studio version I don't know whoever put that out and there as a like the you wouldn't like if you see the poster and if you wouldn't know like an iconic character a character on it you couldn't tell that it is that movie <laughs> it's out there i'm so intrigued i want to see it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got we're gonna do some research on this people <laughs> but yeah check it out also online people so polish polish old movie posters are crazy i'll tell you that <laughs> um so uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we talked about uh, some some new artwork. And um, w what is your what is your knowledge except like Mondo and the stuff we touched upon uh, about the alternative movie poster scene? It's very very small, very small. Do, do you know, you know artists? Uh, people. I mean, you you and Eileen are in touch. She's uh, <laughs> kind of in, in that direction. But um, yeah, so as how is that for you? Do, you? do you sometimes see something pop up and say, oh, that's great. That's a, that's a cool design. And then you find yeah. out it's an alternative movie poster in that regard. Yes. I mean, um, I'm, I'm fairly new to Instagram. I mm -hmm. just got on it two years ago. And um, so yeah. I'm discovering more yeah. and more artists. Um, yeah, I have, by the way, I people, I have Akiko tagged in the, in, in the uh, caption. So check that out. Instagram, follow her. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think uh, maybe it was about uh, eight years ago, I was asked to be on a panel at South by Southwest mm -hmm. talking about movie posters. And that was the first time I met some people that uh, were okay. some designers okay. that were Mondo, you know, that were part of the Mondo family. Mm -hmm. Who did you meet? And, and, um, well, uh, the main guy. Oh, my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. <laughs> Drawing blank on the main Mondo guy, but then there was also Sam Smith. Sam Smith um, there yeah. was also Justin Erickson, which is Phantom City. Oh Creative. yeah, Justin. I just talked to him. It's his podcast is kind of yeah. He's great. Po Him yeah. and are amazing. Yeah, yeah. he is, and I, uh, his podcast is kind of come out before you. I think yeah, it's the one before you. Oh great! So I'll yeah, have to check it's, it out. it's Justin. Yeah. It, uh, Justin and his beautiful uh, wife Paige. They are they're yeah. in there, and they're, and they are pregnant, by the way. So they get they're getting a kid now, right? They now, right? are. They are. Yeah. 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 So that. No, they're great. 
Yeah. Um, and then um, more recently, the last two Comic Cons, I was on a panel with uh, Rory Kurt. Oh, Rory, he was and on. So, uh, so uh, How, yeah. Did you see his parasite piece? Did I? Did I see his what? His parasite piece. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. I'm trying wow. to. We're gonna do a trade okay. where he gives me the lot, the line drawing of that wow, poster. Wow, he is. So I'm obsessed with it, yes. Oh my yes. god, so, that's nice of him. So fingers crossed it still happens. But yeah, Rory is awesome. So you know, I'm just starting to to get to know more and more people in 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 that field, that's great. and you know, and it's been great to see them uh, cross over. Mm -hmm. To working with actual um, studios more and more, you yeah, know. That's cool. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy that it, it's starting to happen, and I encourage it. I always encourage yeah. it. So if, if you're bored, by the way, there's a little plug. I think, but I think it's happened by then because um, uh, uh, I, I work with the poster posse together, and we're gonna do for uh, Halloween uh, the posse palooza. It's gonna be like all the artists from the poster posse. They're like they, okay. we combined for a piece and stuff like that and it's gonna be uh, on Halloween and we're gonna have some some cool it's a cool time and people are gonna do live drawings and stuff like that so it's gonna oh that be sounds fun. awesome definitely something yeah. if you cannot go out of the house get some get some people in costume into your house on the screen at least <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> What's your costume gonna uh, be? Are you I, allowed to say? I, I am allowed to say, but I haven't figured it out yet because I never, I, I, I the only costume I ever did was um, uh, Han Solo, obviously. <laughs> okay, seems appropriate. So yeah, I, but it, it, it wouldn't translate that much in, uh, in, in terms of on the screen, you know? So I have to think, because I don't, <laughs> I don't have any helmets I could hide on. So I might mm -hmm. have to do maybe, maybe something like, Beard related, I don't know. Beard related, okay. Something I, I have to see something something fun, okay. but I, I haven't decided yet. I will do that on short notice. <laughs> okay, you have one week to make yeah, it happen. Yeah, I know, I know. No pressure here. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay. Um, the galleries. Since we talked about galleries, um, are you are you buying from galleries or just artists directly in that case? Because um, yeah. I try to buy directly from artists when possible. And like I said, it's it's fairly new to me. I mm -hmm. mean, before Instagram, I just kept my head down and buried into work. So I wasn't really aware of what's been mm -hmm. happening outside mm -hmm. of my industry. Yeah. So and I'm still fairly and new. And it's very good that you probably, because like some, some stuff, <laughs> it's going to be hard. If you, if you are not uh, like, if you don't know your ways around, because like the releases... You have to have a schedule actually because most of them, the really, the 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 really really good ones and like the the ones that everybody want, they're sold mm -hmm. out in like a minute or two. Oh wow! So it's like hard to get stuff sometimes. And like the Mondo releases oh. are always sold out. There's like so many people that are like um, the kids call it butt hurt uh, about it. So yeah. yeah, I am gonna have a Mondo release. You do. Just to give you a little. Uh, okay, we're gonna little. talk about that when when we're gonna talk about your process and what's coming up. <laughs> but before we're gonna <laughs> go there, I wanna I wanna talk about um because you also collect not movie posters, not uh, not all movie posters. You also collect different art, right? I do, um, and it's weird because they don't connect to the last person. They're very. It's all over the place. Tell me, tell me about it though. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess for me, I don't know why. I've always been intimidated about hanging art for some mm -hmm. reason. But now I'm starting to buy more art, especially during the pandemic. Uh, I bought some art. <laughs> but um, I guess one of my more big pieces that I just purchased maybe half a year ago was by this artist, John Key. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited about his work and seeing it in person was even more powerful. I mean, it's autobiographical and it's bold and, and uh, uh, he doesn't hide his mistakes. So I always love when I can see tangible thought process. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's one of the artists that I just uh, bought a piece yeah. from. I, I just um, pulled that up. Um, is, is that where you put your trophies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the corner behind a plant <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> is, is there a reason for it or did, was it just I, I think you did you say did you just say you just moved to a new house is that is that why it is or what was it no i just um uh, i'm trying to figure out where to put my trophies because i feel like if i put them in a display it feels a little like obnoxious mm -hmm. so um but is it like a mantel know. piece put it on the <laughs> on the yeah, fireplace yeah I mean, they used to be on my bookshelf, but then I realized every time I had a Zoom call, they were like right behind me. And I was like, oh, that's very... <laughs> that's not that's not the person I am. <laughs> yeah. So then like, I've been like trying to find places to put them where it's like, obviously I'm proud of them, but I don't want to be like, hey, check me out. So Put, I, put them in I, a bathroom. I, I think that's a funny bathroom conversation. Put them in a bathroom. In a guest yeah, bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Admire me, people, while you on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, or put them at the door, like as door stops. Are they are they that heavy? I, I can't. I don't know. I can't tell. They're pretty heavy. They're pretty All heavy. Right, okay. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, like like funny thing because like uh, one of my students, uh, he he just had his uh, or former students. He's not a student anymore, but uh, he he became an actor. Um, during the time and we talked a lot about film and stuff and he just had his like for his first major feature film he had the trailer release and it's about Warner Brothers Germany and uh, like mm -hmm. he's like really happy and that's like he always like uh, he always um, tells me like um, when we talk uh, like yeah if, if I'm ever gonna win an Oscar or something like that I will I will mention you and and so on he's like really and like I'm, I'm really like I don't know blessed by it like, like he's like he, that I kind of gave him uh or put him in the right direction and i think that that's a that's a really good feeling to have that and, and he, like that that's like all like those those things remind me of it i think that's, that's the closest i'm going to come to an award like that <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet though yeah he's, he's a good kid and i think he has a good career ahead of him so i i, I hope he's gonna make it and we have yeah. and the movie is gonna do it well. You might actually might really get mentioned. Yeah, I hope so. We, we're going to do an interview. We're going to we're going to do an interview for the podcast uh, soon, but it's probably all going to be in German. So, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's a good he's a good kid. Good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, back back to uh, John Bryan's Brian's. John Brian's. Uh, yes, John Brian's. He helped me design um, and put together my book. Mm -hmm. So um, I I I have one of his pieces in my how, office. How is he related? By the way, I I got the I got the book here, my friends, and it's it's a great book. If you don't have it, go get it. It's definitely worth it, people. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I, I I I lately I got a lot of books. By the way, I got I got the Liam Wong, the Tokyo book. Do you know Do you know Liam Wong, the no, phot the photographer? He yeah. does he does um, he. F took pictures of Tokyo and it looks all basically like Blade Runner sci-fi oh, wow. photography. It looks super cool. And I got, um, I got a spoke art book, my neighbor Hayao. Mm -hmm. That's a great piece. And I got the new geek art, uh, anthology volume three. That's by, oh. it's, it's by Thomas Oliveri. He's a, he's a French, uh, uh, person. And he, uh, I think, yeah, it's the third version of it. And he basically collects all the different artists from like, like who does pop, who do pop culture art and puts them all in that book to display and get to know some new ideas. It's very cool. I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. Let's check him out. Yeah. But how is he as an artist involved? How, how did the book happen? And um, how is that connected? Oh boy. Okay. So I guess a few years ago, I, I keep saying this, I keep saying, Oh, I'm going to get out of this industry. You know, I <laughs> and, uh, I remember this one, uh, director that I worked closely with for this horror film many years ago, I was in conversation with him saying, yeah, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. You know, mm -hmm. movie posters, they've definitely treated me well, but I want to see what else I can do. Mm -hmm you know, um, and I'm thinking about quitting it. And he's like, well, before you quit, you got to put, to, you got to put a book out <laughs> of your stuff and have that be your kiss goodbye. Okay. Wow. Is, is, is that, is, do you want to say something with that now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because I later on, like, uh, I later on repeated this story to another director 
And he just happened to be close with the publisher Hatton Beard. So this rumor got passed on to Hatton Beard. And mm -hmm. next thing I knew, they wanted to do a book of my movie posters. So um, at first, I was so nervous about that because, you know, in my industry, people don't get credit for things. Um, they're very, uh, a lot of movie poster agencies and rightfully so, are, are very secretive about their designers because they don't want their designers to be poached to another agency. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the agency wants to get credit for the work instead of individuals. So I was a little unnerved about, about possibly doing this, but at the same time, I remembered that most of my work is illustrated, so it, it's a little bit different. And so um, somehow I thought, okay, why not? Why not put this book together? You know, and, 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 you know, like I said, too, I wasn't on any type of social media, mm -hmm. so I didn't know what would come out of it. I didn't even know if anybody would care. And I just thought, you know what? It'll be cool to have kind of like a tangible portfolio of my work. Yeah. So the process started and all throughout the process, I was like, I don't know if I should be doing this, it's making me panic. <laughs> I've never put my work out there before. You know, I feel very vulnerable about making something tangible about my work. But um, even up until a month before they actually printed the book, I was like, maybe I should just pull out. I can't do mm -hmm. this. But then also I had to kind of remind myself that I have to keep challenging myself. And right before the book cam came out, I was on this panel at Comic-Con and I didn't think anybody knew me because I was on a panel with, you know, some amazing artists that do the Avengers, like Paul Shipper and all this stuff. Mm. And I'm this one girl that does like indie projects. So I didn't think anybody would even know or care to go. But as soon as our panel finished, these two women came up to me and they said, we were so excited. We came just for you. Aww. We love that you're yeah, we're like, we love that you're a woman designer and we love that you're representing women designer. And it was at that moment that I was like, oh my God, I do need to kind of put myself out there and I do need to let other women designer know that we are there and there actually are a good amount of women designers in my field, but they work for uh, agencies full time so they don't get credit. So mm -hmm. I think it's up to me to represent women in this that's field. Perfect. So, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's yeah. what I always try to do. I don't, I don't know if, uh, I, I think I haven't told you it, but, but uh, I, I'll do, my, my podcast comes out um, like the, 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 there's one episode that is just a release podcast with a focus on, uh, but has like the release from the last two to three weeks and then f uh, has a section where it focuses on one print and the artist is on and talks about just this print. And then I have an interview podcast like this one here. And I alternate every, every time between, um, a, a male person and then, uh, or like, or somebody in that direction. Uh, and then uh, another gender in that, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I tried to keep it by gender because it was like the closest I could get <laughs> to like having uh, some some form of representation. I always try to get on uh, female voices in that regard and um, mm -hmm. have them uh, be on a stage. So that's it's important to me as well uh, as also people of color to get them on. But it's like it's not hard in this. Uh, it's kind of hard in this industry uh, to find uh especially people of color and um, the women behind posters or that that made it out there and uh, could could at least get some some prints out and you know get traction enough yeah. to to get noticed well thank you for doing that yeah it's important you know and and like I said there are there are female voices in my industry it's just hard to get them out there we're in a nameless industry and so that also was part of the the intention of putting the book out too, is to hopefully encourage to get more credit to to designers too. Yeah, you know, maybe they'll be less upset <laughs> in this in this industry if 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 all their hard work is is you know is mentioned. Yeah, and I think that's uh, it's also very important. I just had a talk. Was it t today? Yeah, I think yeah, it was today. Um, about uh, the talent house competitions, for example, I, there was a shitstorm, for example, uh, with uh, no time to die posters that uh, was uh, uh, that there were talent house was uh, involved with, and uh, the sad thing is that people on on the higher ups 
have never heard about this or the marketing uh, marketing team has never heard about the, the shitstorm that happened on Twitter about it because the artists put a lot of work in, only one of the people get credited, but the, 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 the company keeps all the artwork and has the rights to it and stuff like that. So it's very a complex issue and in terms of being represented and being um, or having the chance to uh, to get paid for the work they actually do and that's like it's like very hard it's not it's it's like you know basically downgrading an illustrator designer from uh, uh from what their status is actually in the industry to somebody who does a fan art drawing you know yeah yeah and that's sometimes kind of sad to see that these kind of projects exist and that that the bigger companies do that yeah Hopefully that'll change. I hope so too. I hope so too. But uh, yeah, I mean, the poster posse is trying in that direction, obviously, to help the artists to get them seen and get them to to big studios and get them get them known out there. So I think yeah. that's a, that's a, one of the good things uh, that comes with the poster posse and other people are doing that too. And it's like on Instagram, this is um, there are a bunch of hashtags that go along with like uh, is it visible women. Hashtag visible women, I think it is for 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 female designers and also artists uh, artists supporting artists obviously as a hashtag and like there's this this in especially in the alternative movie poster scene there's a very tight knit community and people know each other very mm -hmm. well and um, they they help each other out like support the other the other one's work and stuff like that so that's very cool. No, that's great. I, I think it's it's important to help each other out mm. too. You know, I think people are kind of tied to this old uh, this old way of thinking that if uh, that there are only certain number of seats to fill. Mm. So you know, especially in advertising, it can feel more cutthroat. Yeah. And people people often ask me like, oh, how do you feel about other illustrators coming into the movie industry world? And I'm like, I love it. I love it. I encourage it because I feel like even if four illustrators were assigned the exact same thing to do, we are all going to do it differently. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it as competition. I see it as a wave that needs to happen. I mean, I I love that there's more and more illustration happening in, in the movie poster field. I love that it's getting more mainstream and not just to collectors. Mm. And and um, I'm happy to form an army easily, you know, so. Yeah. And before I forget, yeah. are you going to quit now? Oh, okay. Yeah, going back <laughs> to that. <laughs> I'm not quitting now. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to focus more on my personal artwork. Um and maybe that'll happen next year. But um, again, going back to movie, the movie poster industry, it's been so kind to me and I feel so appreciative. And especially after getting on Instagram and interacting with people that follow my work and, and having people buy my book, it's, it's kind of rejuvenated my, my, my spirit for it, you know, because before then I was like, what's the point? Nobody cares. But to, to feel that people care and that I'm actually connecting now with all these other artists, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's been great. It's been great to kind of feel like I have this virtual family. So now I, I feel like I can't let people down, you know, and I have to keep, keep, keep it up. So, um, yeah. so I'm thankful. Uh, I, uh, in your book is also, there is, um, I will show that to the people here. Um, there's there are these there are these pages in there where you can see kind of the process and the ideas behind it, and I think that's really really interesting and important, and especially other artists who are maybe trying themselves out if this is something for them. And your book gives some some inspiration to them, I think, and um, that's why it's not just for the for the great art you do that people should buy this book, but also to maybe motivate uh, themselves, get, get inspired, especially um, up and coming artists, as I just mentioned, or uh, people that are stuck in, in a certain way that need some, maybe some new perspective. And I think the book gives that. And uh, so it's definitely kind of, in, in a kind of way, therapeutic. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
Oh, that makes you feel so good. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you have also, you sent me also a Mad Magazine piece. Is that you did that yourself? Is that, is that, did I read that correctly? Yes, this was a piece I did maybe four or five years ago, and it's almost six feet mm -hmm. tall. Um, there is this art bookstore that had this thing where once a month they would feature an artist, and it would be called it was it was called One Artist One mm -hmm. Wall, and so mm -hmm. um, basically we could do whatever we wanted with the wall. Mm -hmm. And because the space was so large, I thought, oh, I'll make a custom piece that fits exactly in that space. And so um, I was trying to think, I'd never had that open of a, of a project before. So of course I was over analyzing and, and spiraling <laughs> about like what I was gonna do for it. But then I just kind of narrowed it down to what influenced me early on creatively. You know, I, I think back of, of, of when I grew up reading Mad Magazine, which most kids don't even know about these days. Did, but, did, they, um, did they stop it, by the uh, way? Uh, that, you know what? Isn't that's it, in the news? It's, yeah, they were going to stop making the monthly yeah. issues. I think they may now do three a year, and, and they might be compilations of old yeah. ones. So as far as, like, continuing on how they have been over the – decades it's no longer and you, you also you also but collect the, the comics because you sent me a pic that I, I just pulled that up like yeah, yeah my friend my friend before I moved away he he gave me his collection um because i have a very fond memory of when my dad would come down to los angeles um and he would look at auto auto magazines automobile magazines and so he would be in bookstores for hours looking at these mm -hmm. magazines And I would be at the side by myself looking at Mad Magazines. <laughs> and one thing that Mad Magazine always had in the back cover was this this page where you see an image and then you have to fold it in and it makes yeah. another image. So I was really the one, anytime someone bought a Mad Magazine and it was already folded, it was probably because of me being like <laughs> eight years old folding it in a magazine. But I grew up... Uh, loving mad magazines because I always thought that the art was so well done and they were all so satirical, like, um, kind of current uh, satirical views on current events. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was, I just became, you know, quite obsessed with them. And it was always my dream as a kid to eventually grow up and do a cover of a mad magazine. <laughs> and since I never really got that chance, this was kind of my way of, doing it for myself. And so um, what I did is I, I kind of converged the idea of Mad Magazine with the idea of uh, Chuck Close, who when I first started art school, I thought was a huge influence on my work. So I combined like influences from different eras of my life and I made this six foot tall piece, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a hybrid of both. So it was yeah. really fun to work big. It was fun to be away from the computer to do it. And, um, you know, it was a nice challenge for myself. So I was really proud of it. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks cool. It looks very great. Is, is it, what, what kind of material is like, what, what, how did you draw it with like a pencil, chalk, charcoal? I used or yes, charcoal, graphite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And, um, by the way, in a collection, you can see two trucks. Are those toys of your son? They are. <laughs> <laughs> I he comes into my office every once in a while. I got to keep him busy. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. But by the way, um, asking um, your, your dad, is he still alive? Or yeah, I hope so. Right? My, my dad is still alive. Yeah. Um, is, he, is he designing trucks for your son? Not yet. Not yet. He, uh, I think uh, that'll probably happen later on in life. Yeah. And doing like those cool 3D models for him. Yeah, I mean, my dad, my dad, he was one of the first illustrators at that time to use charcoal and marker together. Okay. So he still renders his cars exactly like that. And so I'm hoping, you know, when my son's a little bit older and can appreciate that, he, he might do a, a truck or some kind of illustration for my son. He would love it. That's great. And uh, by the way, speaking of uh, doing art for your son, did you do something for him? 
Um, we do a lot of projects for, you know, during quarantine, we were doing um, more crafty projects because at that time he wasn't allowed to go to playgrounds and he still isn't. So I made him a playground out of cardboard boxes. <laughs> Uh, my ex-boyfriend was moving out of my house at that time, so I had all these extra cardboard mm. boxes. So I made him like a playpen and, you know, we did a lot of things out of cardboard. Yeah. And what's great about it is that he can break it and it doesn't feel so precious. So, you know, when he gets to an older age where he can, where he's not trying to destroy things all the time, I'll, I'll definitely keep making him things. Okay. Because like, for example... Um I always like uh, when I sometimes I go through the releases and their um, bottleneck, for example, they have that's a gallery. Um, they have um, they, they made a Disney series. Uh, it's it's okay. 12. It's yeah, 12 by 36 or the other way around, like the, not not the landscape, but the portrait format. And mm -hmm. um, it, it's like basically a, a shot or idea from a certain Disney animated movie. And uh, I always like say, yeah, this is something you should put in your child's bedroom and stuff like that. Because like, and I was thinking like, maybe did you do a poster that should go into your child's bedroom? <laughs> I mean, I, I have a few different drawings that are in okay. his, 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 his room at his, at his father's house, okay. at my son's dad's house, because... Um, um, there was a period of time where my son and his father would only watch Moana. Oh, okay. So uh, my son's dad sort of looks a little bit like uh, Maui. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I made a portrait of of Maui and the girl, but made the girl into a boy. Like I, I've, I've, I've drawn them a few times as as different Disney characters, and you know, as the Simpson Simpsons and How to Train Your Dragon. So I that'll see. continue to happen. Okay, so, yeah, uh, so if you ever want an Akiko Sternberger OG <laughs> Moana version, <laughs> now is your chance. <laughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering, is, is there something, by the way, in your, in your office, is there something, do you have it set up in a certain way? What, what, what do we, what do we, what does it look like? It's very simple. It's a desk mm -hmm. with some books and a scanner, an oversized mm -hmm. scanner to scan in my paintings. But, um, I'm only more recently trying to make it nicer because before it was just you know, I used it just to do my work and to leave. Like I didn't want to spend any extra time there that I didn't have to because our hours are so long. Yep. You I know, know, I I work weekends. You know, so I think it was more just to utilize it than anything. But now I'm starting to like buy plants for it. I'm going to repaint it and 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 make it a little and feel and a little remember, bit more it's all grown up. Tax deductible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's. Yeah, but my. Like my office and my studio, I've been there for maybe nine years mm -hmm. now, and it's an old building. They actually, there's a scene from Reservoir Dogs that was shot right oh, in front okay. of my office. And uh, the actual building looks like an old detective's office. It's all brick and weird carpet in the mm -hmm. main, like in the open area before you get to the actual, yeah. our front door. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting building, and 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 um, yeah, we're we're just starting to make it look a little bit more like adults. <laughs> okay. Do you, so, do, <laughs> do you share your office with somebody or with some other artists or? I do. Um, I share it with um, two other uh, independent movie poster you designers. Wanna, you want to shout them out and or? Yes, Eric Buckham, who does PalaceWorks.net, and he collaborates with Kaylin White who is also part of Pal Palace Works, but does her own work, which is, which is uh, kaylinwhite.com, and that's C-A-E-L-I-N, white.com. If, if, like, if you have the Instagram, do they have an Instagram handle? They do. do. They will send uh, it to me afterwards. So I will, I, I will I'll put it, it in, the, in, in the, the caption and stuff like that so people can find them. Yeah, it's probably better than me spelling everything out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and then uh, uh, another... A fellow, another illustrator also works there as well, and he does like infographics and advertising illustration too. So, we've been there for a long time, and it's great because you know um, we, we feed off of each other. Sometimes Eric and I are on the same project for the okay. same client, but have no idea. <laughs> There's been we both did uh, posters for It Follows, mm -hmm. and we both did posters for Colossal, and we had no idea we were each working on it separately. 
you know, until one of us accidentally popped our heads into the other's office. Yeah, okay. But we're, we, we all go there and we all just bury our head into work. So we're not very aware of what each other are working on, you know? Did you, uh, but speaking of infographics, uh, would you ever want to do something like that for a movie? Because for, uh, I have one. It's in my guest ba uh, bathroom. It is for Jaws, and it's like you can see a, like a like a shark cage and like the shark, and then it says like all the facts like with little uh, like arrows pointing to the 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 fin tail of a shark is this and that, and uh, the teeth are like this and that, and, so, and it has all like the infos for uh, f basically the Jaws give you, and they made an infographic <laughs> for that. It looks really cool. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'd be open to it. I mean, I'm constantly switching up how I illustrate and and the content. So, you know, I'm, I'm open to a lot of the, a right. lot of different things. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of your work, um, you teased us a couple of times. I want to hear more. <laughs> oh, about what's coming? Some projects. <laughs> um, well, I'm I'm working on a project with Neon. I can't say what it is yet, but. Um, They will be releasing uh, posters through Mondo yeah. for it. So Googling so I, latest neon films. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but is, is it something But that I is already released or something that is going to come? Um, I believe it. a poster may have already been, but um, I'm still in the process of painting it. So... Okay, okay. We just have to 2020s. Where we, Palm Springs, I have that already. <laughs> Matt Taylor did that, so that's out, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so it's Possessor is done as well. So it's gonna be I, I have a feeling it's gonna be bad hair. Hmm. I Yep. You'll just have to wait and see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little guessing game. I thought I'm gonna get something out of you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, any anything else that's gonna come? Um, let's see. Um, nothing I can really talk about. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, it's so. okay. I know. I know all this NDA stuff. It's very hard to talk yeah. about. But yeah. um, then then let's go. I, I told the people as in your book uh, how you approach your art, uh, the the art uh, in in what you create. But could you walk us uh, through it on, on, on your side? How do you, um, like, do you start out watching the movie, like, mm -hmm. five times and then pick pick something? Or how, how is this process for you? Okay, um, well, I'm hired at completely different stages mm -hmm. of the actual production of the film. Sometimes they want to uh, get some kind of ad advertising going before they even shot it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just get a small paragraph that summarizes the film. Uh, most of the time I'll get scripts and I'd say maybe 10% of the time I'll get a screener and uh, rarely is it finished, a finished project uh, product. It's, 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 it's always so fun to see uh, how much editing and music really make a film mm -hmm. feel like a film versus watching a play. Yeah. Um, well, how, how does so, it, in, sorry to interrupt you, but how does it feel in that, uh, in terms of how hard is it? Like for these different approaches, you know, uh, how, which is the hardest in that regard? To, as far as what I'm given? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like if you, could I, because I could imagine if you're just given like a two two-liner summary or whatever i think you are more open to create something instead of having just, I you know i mean usually when i'm getting like a two-line synopsis it means that whatever i'm creating doesn't have to necessarily attach itself to the actors mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. really just have to come up with something conceptual that summarizes the heart of the film mm -hmm. so i i love that i love that um that definitely feels the more, more, more open. Um, when something is already almost finished and they really want to make sure an actor is featured, it's a little more challenging, but, but like I said, I, I like when there's confinements and, and I'm able to kind of push them, you know, but, um, after I've, I've given some form of the film, my first stage is just coming up with concepts. Mm -hmm. And this to me is the most important 
thing for me. Do you do s- more so than the? Do you do sketches like for, for that and like? I do. Sketches. So you have a sketch. You yeah. have a sketchbook. Yeah, I have a sketchbook. I mean, usually the first day I'm just looking at the internet, looking at Instagram, Pinterest. I'm googling keywords. Mm. I'm you know I'm looking at stock photography. I, I'm I'm just. I cast a wide, wide mm-hmm. net. I mean, even if I just think of a word, I'll I'll just type it into to like Getty images yeah. to see what comes up because sometimes the most random thing is still connected to this idea. Yeah. So the first day is just looking at images, and then um, then I slowly compile it down. I, I do these rough sketches in my notebook before finally I decide which five to 10 ideas I want to show to a client. And when I show them to a client, they're really rough sketches. They don't look like I know how to draw at all, but it's really because I don't want to waste my time drawing things until I know that we're going to go yeah, down a certain if, path. If, if you want to have some fun, uh, rewatch my, uh, my release podcast episode where I talked to Rory Kurtz about his parasite piece. And okay. he told me, yeah, this is the sketch for uh, for the Parasite piece, and that's what we gave to them. And I was like, this is a sketch? Are you kidding me? This basically was, it was basically done. He's, he's that crazy. That sketch that you saw is the one that yeah. I'm hoping to get I know, I know. He, he does crazy sketches. He does crazy sketches. Right? He's insane. He's insane. I don't know how he does any of his work. Yeah. I'm <laughs> absolutely in awe of how he does it. Um, but yeah, my sketches don't look anything it, like it's, that. It's totally fine. <laughs> it has to work for you. I mean, I'm just like crazy yeah. that like that sometimes, you know, I know this, uh, Matt, Matt Ferguson, um, he, he does basically stick figures just to like to put yeah. stuff somewhere. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not far from that. So, I mean, that's the first stage is just these really crappy thumbnails. Mm-hmm. And then I make them decide on one, possibly two ideas, which I would do in a more formal line drawing. Yeah. And, and that I call a blueprint. Okay. And that is to size of the poster. That is with the type. And that really shows exactly how the composition is going to go. Okay. So um, once that blueprint is, is, is approved, I just go to town and I paint it. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah. And um, <clears throat> I, I know there are not really, I mean, in terms of the posters come out as a print. But um, did you ever think about having them as a screen print or as a G clay print or something like that? More, more refined artwork in that in that regard instead in, instead of a glossy uh, poster. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've I've definitely dipped my toe into making G clays. I did like a small run of certain pieces mm-hmm. that I did on the low, <laughs> um, and. I think for me, just managing, shipping them, rolling and all that is, is a little bit beyond what I, my bandwidth can handle with work. But, um, but Rory's always trying to get me, he's like, come on, get into it, get to, get into it. it, it it's easier once you get a system yeah, yeah. down. <laughs> uh, kind of always like, oh, it's too much work for me, you know, but, but I, I might be more open to it down the road but but yeah when i did print g clays but even even it, even when it comes now since you're doing something with mondo uh it will probably what will it be Do, can you tell that is it, is it going to be a screen print or a g clay print i think it's going to be a screen print. okay yeah. so that's going to be fun doing all the saps <laughs> but yeah you, i have no idea how to do I, I just want to say you so. have any idea <laughs> <laughs> no, that works. I have no idea how to do it. So luckily, they're gonna have somebody yeah, from there the, the to help me. The printers are the the guy who does that. He he knows his stuff. <laughs> yeah, because it's just it's beyond what this brain can handle. But um, but yeah, I mean, uh, for for the small run of G clays that I have done to see them printed at size and on this paper, it it really you forget how powerful something is when it's in real life and it's big. I'm so used to looking at it on my computer screen. So I have a different relationship with it. But once I have seen it in yeah. person, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this, this is, is, I know, I know, I know the feeling when I, when I get a new tube and get out this, the, the poster, roll it out, put it on with the weights and oh, it looks just amazing. I, I, I totally yeah. know the feeling, but especially uh, with, with Rory's piece. I, I can't wait for the, the parasite piece to come in. 
because it's yeah. going to look so amazing in person. It looks already great on. Which version did you get? Which color version? Did uh, you get? I tried for the um, for the uh, variant with the K Korean uh, title. Korean title. I tried title. for that, but as I said, this is was sold out in a second. In a second. It was like yeah. way too fast, and and you know there was a bad the, the bad thing happened. I I'm not proud of it. But a good thing is that this podcast exists and that I have friends. <laughs> because. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I didn't get it at the night when it came out, and I had the interview the next day, and um, I was... He couldn't have given you a special in? <laughs> he probably could have, but I, I, I was like, it's, it's fine, I'll, I'll, just grab the, I'll just grab the regular, because it was a timed edition. It was, it was available yeah. Yeah, as, as many times as uh, somebody would buy it. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that uh, after the interview, I'm going to do that on Sunday. I forgot. Ooh. brain fart on that and i was like shit should and I, I was sure i did it i was sure i i i, I think i even put yeah. it in the cart and then i forgot about it to to do the checkout oh no oh that's terrible. and then i was like oh f and then i i i wrote i wrote rory and then he said yeah he could probably do something when the ap's come out and then I also wrote Eric from Mondo, so shout out to the Mondo guys, and they hooked me up, and uh, I, so I could get a, a regular timed edition as well. So that was lucky, yeah, lucky okay. on my side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was, yeah. I was really, I, uh, I, 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 my girlfriend was sitting on the couch, and I was, I, really, I was really bummed out. I was like, for, for a whole day, she know I could. <gasps> I, I was like, that was like, because for me, it's personally, it's definitely in the top three of posters for this year yeah and and i I'm, I'm, it's yeah. gonna come out uh because i'm gonna do like a, a like a march you know march madness and, and the basketball march madness ncaa yeah like this kind of i'm gonna do a tournament bracket for movie posters from this year oh wow it's gonna come out in Great. november and that's gonna be okay. almost every day it's gonna be at least one or two matches until we have the poster of the year People can vote like oh, which one they like better, and uh, from the two of them, and then it's gonna be uh, you know, it's gonna be a winner. And I th I think Rory's could definitely be in the final four. Oh, I easily, easily. Yep. I, I think so too. Yeah. But that's a, it's up to the people. <laughs> yeah. It's up to the people. <laughs> no, no influencing the vote here. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Last question for your work. Um, what was uh, the most challenging uh, challenging project so far in terms of an idea, maybe? Oh, boy. Hmm. I mean, more recently, I've been really lucky that they've been going smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one challenge was when I worked on The Last Black Man in San Francisco. I really great, loved that great film. film. Great film, great yeah. I was working yeah, I was working closely with, with Joe Talbot, the mm -hmm. director, and it was the the two person one was more for a24 mm -hmm. they were very adamant about showing both the men and i get it it's a, it it makes sense they're the two characters of the film but i really felt it was jimmy's story yeah. and i was really hung up on the title saying last black man mm -hmm. singular mm -hmm. So I was trying to really fight for this other, the other idea, which they eventually allowed to happen, which was just him leaning yeah, I, I have it. on I a pulled it up for the people to see. You pulled it up. Yeah, and so um, it was a little bit of a fight, you know, and I was in this tug of war between the director and A24, and like, you know, I'm hired by A24, but I want J Joe to be happy, and mm -hmm. Joe and I have... Mm -hmm closer aesthetics than A24, you know, they were really trying to make it feel more mainstream and more hopeful. And I get it. I, I know how the marketing works, but, um, but Joe really fought for me. And, and, uh, it was one of the times when I was really fighting for myself too to really release that second poster because I was really so yeah. proud of how simple the idea was. And, um, it's so fitting. I, it I love I love the posters, and I love when when I when when I saw those posters came. I, I didn't know you were doing it, and then I was like, "Wow, those posters are amazing!" Finally, somebody's getting something right here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. So I mean, it, it was a struggle, but it happened. It worked, mm. and so uh, I'm very proud Perfect. of it. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so, is there anything you want to work on besides movies? Music, sports, advertisement. I want to... <laughs> Uh, I want to start sculpting more. Okay. Um, I really love, I really love sculpting. It's just, it, it, I just need more hours in the day, you know? Yeah. I and love, I love, I'm I hoping love pop, uh, pop art sculpting. So <laughs> I see, I see, <laughs> I can see that in the background. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think before the pandemic this year was going to be me focusing more on my personal mm -hmm. work and, we never got to lo officially launch my book mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. Yeah. And what we were going to do with the official launch is we were also going to have an art show that had one room that was dedicated to my movie mm -hmm. posters and one room mm -hmm. dedicated to my personal art. And so I was going to take off two months to really create my own personal mm -hmm. work. And then, of course, things went upside down. Well, so uh, is there something I'm hoping to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm hoping to have... Some of that kind of revamped in 2021. Okay. So we'll what see. What kind of direction does your personal work in terms of sculpting go? Is it very expressionistic? Is it realistic? What, what can we expect? Um, I think it's, I mean, I think it's more realistic. Um, I think my personal work is always kind of referencing pop culture. So I feel like it has to be executed in a way that references mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's similar to my movie poster work. I feel like the illustration style has to make sense okay. for the concept. So it's the same thing with my sculptures and, and um, some of my personal pieces I'm going to do. And, and they too are going to have different looks from the one that was that precedes it. So it's more idea driven than anything okay. and, and trying to execute in a way that you're able to get the references right away. Perfect. I can't wait to see that. So and if you ever, if you, if you need an online host, I'll gladly do it on my channel. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's <laughs> um, one of the, the next question is one of my favorite questions. I always like to ask the artists out there. And uh, this is the one where, uh, You will have to do at the end <laughs> when I have enough people. You will have to do this in a certain way. I, I will explain after you give us your answer. Um, okay. Which classical artist would you like to see make a film poster? And which movie or which franchise would he tackle? Oh, boy. Hmm. That is... You're stumping me on this one. Did you not read my questions? <laughs> I did. I did. I don't know how I like really think about this one. Um, hmm. I think it'd be interesting to do uh, to to see. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it'd be nice to see. Modigliani do a poster. Uh, what's that? Uh, you were a little... Modigliani do a poster. Modigliani. Okay, let yeah. me see. Never heard of Modigliani. Italian, mm, Italian. painter. Mm -hmm. okay. Lived in... He's an impressionist? Yes, I think mannerist, possibly. It says uh, cubism. And cubism. Cu cubism, huh. and, uh, cubism and uh, fauvism. I don't know, even know what that is. Never heard of that. But okay, it's some avant-garde painting stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I have. Um, yeah, I, I, I see what he's doing. Um, people, you have to Google it. I'm sorry, I'm not going to pull it up for you right now. <laughs> right. Then I'll make it a little easier. It'd be it'd be nice to see Salvador Dali do a poster. No, no, no. We're going to stick with him. But why why okay. would you why would you say that? Why would you pick him? Or and, and uh, what what movie would he do? Oh boy. I mean, it would have to definitely be an art house film. It doesn't um, have to be. It would be it would be fun to see him do Avengers. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. Actually, yeah. Well, let's let's pick the Avengers. <laughs> okay. See how he All the Avengers, that'd be, that'd be incredible. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tell you now what I mentioned before I asked the question. Because I have people on, I have a bunch of people already committed to it. The people answered and their question and they have to do the poster in that style. Oh, really? Yeah, so you have to do Modigliani style Avengers poster. 
Okay. Okay. I like that challenge. I'll do that. It's okay. Be fun. It's, it's going to, yeah. It, it, when, when we're going to realize it, it's, I'm going to tell you, and then uh, uh, you will have ample of time to do it. And uh, okay. that would, that would be like the fun little thing. For example, uh, Oliver Barrett, he's also one of the Mondo guys he did. I, I forgot who he did, but he said some, some um, uh, like Kandinsky or something like that. Vasil, Vasilev okay. Kandinsky. And, um, and we were talking about what, what he could do. And he said, yeah, let's, let's do Mad Max and have like, 30 different brown uh, uh, squares in there and all representing the movie poster. And the, That's great. Oh, man, now I want to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's okay. You pick the easy one. <laughs> I, like, I like this challenge. This will be fun. This will be really fun. Yeah, that's the idea. That's, that's what I'm trying to come out. Like, maybe maybe like early next year, try to do that. Have all the artists from this year that um, have been on the podcast, have them do their, uh, their answers. Okay. That's the plan. Now, that, that's fun. I, I'm into it. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I shot myself in the foot, but you know what? I am up for the challenge. I'm writing this down. Modigliani Avengers. Right. There we go. Perfect. Eat your heart out, Paul Shipper. Let's see what happens. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. And um, my basically last question, uh, or not really last, but the, the, the almost last talking point is, um, do you have any tips for people that are coming up? In terms of yes. hardware, software, utensils, social media, I don't know. You you name it. Yeah. Um, well, I say whatever media you're most comfortable with. I mean, I only use Photoshop. I'm sure my life would be so much easier if I used Coral Paint and all these other amazing programs. But I, I use Photoshop the way that I would use painting in real life. But, um, but my biggest recommendation, and I, I told this to Eileen too, is really use social media, really use it as a tool. Even if you're not making real posters, make fake ones, put them up there. People, people will see them. It's never been easier to get your work out there. Don't be shy. And as I'm saying this, I'm telling myself this because obviously I didn't join Instagram till two years ago for the same reasons, but it's, you know, it's important. Like this is, this is, now the new version of people's portfolio and really get it out there no one's gonna find you if you don't put yourself out there that's just how it is there you go Spe speaking of uh f do you have a wacom tablet or uh, in uh cintiq or what, what do you use i have a way i have a wacom in it and it's a it's a, a large one with the with the yeah. screen on it i think that is it a cintiq i don't know i have no clue about no, this, but uh, it's it's it doesn't have the screen it's still I'm still looking up at my my desktop when I do it. I'm, yeah, I'm not as advanced as the other illustrator in my studio. He it's has all the, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know I, I know for a fact was everybody was working with that. For, and Matt Ferguson, uh, he changed to the to the surface to the studio surface, which is where you have like a 27 okay. inch screen or however big that is that is all touchscreen and with the Microsoft Pen, and he does wow. he does great work with that. So. Must be, must be doing yeah, something, right? Whatever people feel comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible to see what kind of illustration is coming mm -hmm. out using those different different media. So, you know, maybe one day yeah. <laughs> I'll learn how to use it. All right. Um, before you leave, um, I want you to tell the people out there where they can find you, um, like on, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, wherever, wherever is, wherever is good. And after that, you will have some time to shout out everybody you want, your family, your friends, other artists, or just say something like, like you would say at the Clio acceptance speech. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm not on Twitter, but I am on Instagram and my handle is doyrivative, which you'll put down in this thing because I know it's the weirdest word. I don't know why I chose that and stuck to it. Um, also, my website's akikomatic.com. Uh, you can find my book uh, on hattonbeard.com or for people in Europe, you can find it in Amazon, on Amazon. Yeah, there we go. There it is. There it is. Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, and as far as shout outs, um, as I mentioned earlier on, like, until a few years ago, I had no idea that so many people were following my work and, and I've been really appreciating all the 
support and all the love and all the artists that I've been meeting through Instagram and through different, you know, connections. So it's really been pivotal in, in kind of recharging my batteries in this industry. And so it feels great and I'm so thankful for it. And, um, yeah, I, I just can't say thank you enough to anybody who finds my work interesting. So I just don't want to let you down and I want to keep doing good work. So, um, that's good. So no, no quitting and uh, a special shout out again to Rory and get, get that line work to her, please. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by, Akiko. It's been such a pleasure. A pleasure. And um, thank you to all the listeners and viewers out there. And tune into our next episode. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast or IG page at Drop Mac Official or YouTube. And leave us some comments, shoutouts, or topics and questions for our next show. Okay, bye, guys. <laughs>